These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. <laughs> All right, what's up, everybody? It's Grim Green back here. And today, we're just diving right into one of the most persistent myths in the entire vaping conversation, and that is the phenomenon known as popcorn lung. You've most likely seen headlines because they're popping back up again about vaping causes popcorn lung. You've probably seen it in the news. You probably heard it from friends or relatives or even doctors or just politicians trying to score points. And in this video today, I would like to search and see if there is any science to back up this claim of popcorn lung. Spoilers, no, there's none. Okay, so here's the thing. Popcorn lung isn't just like a scary sounding word. It is an actual diagnosable thing called bronchiolitis obliterans. It's very real and very dangerous and damages all of the small air pathways in the lungs, it leads to things like coughing and wheezing and shortness of breath. The name popcorn lung comes from an early 2000s outbreak of microwave popcorn factory workers inhaling diacetyl, large amounts of diacetyl over a very long period of time. Diacetyl is a flavoring ingredient, usually for buttery bakery things. It gets used as a microwave popcorn buttery flavoring. But here's the thing. These workers in these microwave popcorn factories were exposed to industrial levels of diacetyl. Industrial levels of diacetyl over a very long time period, not from nicotine vaping. Now, all of the talk of popcorn lung and vaping dates back to a 2015 study done by Harvard University. Researchers at Harvard tested a swath of e-liquids and found that some of the samples contain diacetyl. Simply finding diacetyl in an e-liquid, no matter the amount, was enough to spark the headline that vaping causes popcorn lung. But if we pump the brakes on this, this study didn't show that vapors can contract popcorn lung, just that some of the liquids that they tested contained diacetyl. The level of diacetyl detected in these e-liquids was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times lower than what a microwave popcorn factory worker would have been inhaling to contract popcorn lung. And thirdly, this is the really critical part. Tobacco cigarettes contain five to 6,000 times the amount of diacetyl than an e-liquid ever could. And no one has ever connected tobacco cigarettes with popcorn lung. No one is warning cigarette smokers that, yo, you might get popcorn lung. 10 years since this study and the popcorn myth is still hanging on. Now in 2025, I would be shocked if you could find an e-liquid that has diacetyl in it. Across most of the EU and UK, they've already banned diacetyl as an ingredient in e-liquids. You can find liquids in the UK that are branded, labeled diacetyl free. And even in the US, despite the FDA not even giving the vape industry any like clear product standards, it would be impossible to find an e-liquid in the US with diacetyl in. So even if in 2015, Harvard did find some e-liquids with diacetyl in them, the risk from it compared to cigarette smoking has always been minuscule. It's almost like nicotine vaping is harm reduction for people who smoke cigarettes. None, zero, none. Zero cases of popcorn lung have ever, ever been linked to nicotine vaping. This myth refuses to die. And I get it, you know, it's scary. It makes good headlines, probably gets a lot of clicks and politicians love it and anti-vaping groups love it because it's, you know, emotionally charged. It sounds very dangerous despite being essentially scientifically hollow, but the absolute facts are, this is, this is a myth. This is not rooted in any science. This is not rooted in any facts. Popcorn lung is purely rooted in fear. Hi, it's editing guy rooted in fear for nicotine vaping. As I said earlier, popcorn lung is a very real thing. And while I've been editing this video, I found an article of a man who just contracted popcorn lung from eating two packs of microwave popcorn every day from the majority of his life. And he contracted popcorn lung. So popcorn lung is real, 
but so far the only guy that got it outside of a worker was a guy who ate two packs a day and that's a lot of microwave popcorn. Back to the other guy, he finishes real strong. If you are someone who has switched from smoking combustible tobacco cigarettes to vaping, congratulations. You, you've reduced the risk of nearly every cigarette-related disease, and popcorn lung is not one of them. Honestly, in fact, any human who's currently smoking tobacco products should be replacing all of that smoking with vaporizing. It's not even close anymore. We have a mountain of science on this topic. There is a world of less harmful nicotine products out on the market. In the description of this video, I'm putting links to popcorn lung, to just science, to just education. This has been a grim green video. Let's stay cigarette smoke free every single day. Let's stay cigarette smoke free and well informed every single day. Let's stay cigarette smoke free, stay well informed and follow the science every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke so.